Let's give him great praise. All over the house, let's give him great praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, let that victory, let that victory come out of your worship. Let it come out of your praise. Let it come out of your adoration. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, he's victorious. He's victorious. We thank you, God, for the victory. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you today. We worship you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to give a few announcements this morning. And you might have noticed we've let our children just come and lead us in worship today. How many people know that our children need to be exposed to the, to the things of God? Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says a child shall lead them. And we're thankful for what God is doing. You heard when you came in how that uh, recently God has, uh, last night, filled little Maria with the Holy Ghost. Six years old. Six years old. We're so happy for you, Maria, what Jesus did in your heart. And she talked to her mom for a while about being baptized. And uh, we baptized Maria just in the last few weeks. And she told her mom, she said, I wonder when I get baptized if I will receive the Holy Spirit when I come out of the, out of the water. And uh, she had stammering lips that day when she came out of the water. Within a couple weeks, God baptized her with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for what he's doing in our children. And we also thank God today we're going to baptize another young OC kid. Um, we're going to baptize Malaika today in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So we're excited about that, all that God is doing. Amen. But I just feel compelled, and, and, and I don't want to I don't want to take too much time up here, but I wanna I do want us to lift up the Lord for all that he's doing. Here, here's what I know. Here's what I know. I know that victory does belong to Jesus. And here's what I know. It, it doesn't matter what you went through this week. I'm telling somebody in the Holy Ghost. Some of you went through some challenges this week, but just for a moment, get your eyes off what you went through. And today, look unto Jesus. He has the victory. Hear me. We're going to have a Holy Ghost time here today. But don't you get focused on what you went through. That was just a distraction to keep you from Jesus. Look unto Jesus today. The author and the finisher of our faith. God is for us. Hallelujah. I wonder if you could lift up a great praise and adoration all over the house. Come on, let me admonish you today. If you've walked through something this week, just begin to praise God. Maybe you need to get out in the aisle and begin to magnify the Lord. Maybe you need to worship God with a shout today. God is worthy to be praised. somebody don't let it just be the team let it be your voice something else. Could you just lift up your hands? Just whisper his name. Come on, speak it over your problems. Come on, speak the name of Jesus. I'm telling you today, God is going to bring victory in this house. I'm telling you today that no matter what you're up against, Jesus is stronger than what you're walking through. So just lift up your hands with me. Let us surrender to him. Come on, he's a God that is able today. He's a God that's willing today. God, we praise you. Somebody speak his name. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, say Jesus. Come on, church, say Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, it's your name, Jesus. Oh, yes, God, Jesus. Somebody call him. Somebody call him. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In a moment, we're going to let you be seated. I'll only tell you a quick little testimony I feel prompted to tell you. There's an evangelist. He was not always an evangelist. He was a, a drug addict and in and out of jail. And now he's a preacher of the gospel, travels all over the world preaching the gospel. Some of you, if I said his name, you'd know him. But he was far from God, Bishop Dickinson. One day, driving on his motorcycle on the highway. Just finished smoking some dope before he jumped on the motorbike, began to drive down the road. And when he was a kid, he was exposed at a young age to the gospel and knew about the name of Jesus. He got in an accident while he was driving on the highway and be, he began to slide down the highway, his body just skidding down on the pavement. And all he knew how to do, he said he had never called on the name of Jesus in years, but he just had something come over him. And when he hit the pavement, he yelled, Jesus! And a voice spoke to him and said, lift up your head. He was inches away from literally losing the head from off his body. And Jesus spared him. And his point was, and I want somebody to hear it today. Jesus didn't qualify answering him based upon his condition. He just finished smoking some dope. But Jesus can answer a prayer that's sincere. It don't matter how many times the devil tells you to stay down. How many times the devil try to condemn you and say that you're not worthy to call upon the name of the Lord. You don't know my God. You don't know how much he loves you. You don't know how much he paid for you. He loves you. He will hear your prayer. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. I wish somebody would get a hold of that and just speak the name of Jesus. Could you do it? It's a great name. It's a holy name. Speak the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great praise together. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And we're going to just quickly um, make a couple announcements. We do have some guests here today. First of all, I want to welcome all of our guests in the house of the Lord. Amen. Forgive us if you think we're crazy. We are. We don't make apologies for that. Um, today is a pizza Sunday, so after church there will be fellowship for all of the kids. Um, this is also our uh, youth convention weekend, and we're so happy to have uh, Pastor Lou Micah here and Lexa. Um, amen. They're on different parts of the church. They're not fighting. They're not fighting. They're just on different parts of the church. But anyway, they're, they're going to minister to us, and they've been ministering all weekend, and we're grateful for what God is doing to them. And we want to say thank you to Pastor Micah, uh, Sister Sasha, for a job well done. All the youth team, thank God for all the effort that was put in this weekend. Yeah, that's all right. And we want to thank the Lord for that and um, uh, mention some baptisms today. We also have some uh, very special guests in the house today. Um, we have uh, Joanna Dabbs. She's with us all the way from Taiwan. And uh, her family's here, LJ and May Lee. And um, we probably don't have time to go into the whole story, but when she was a young person, Rebecca Mumbercat was her friend, invited her to church. God raised her up uh, to, to be a missionary and, and doing a great job with her husband who's in Florida today. Um, but God raised her up and served the Lord here in Halifax. This was her home church for a while. She thought God called her to be a pharmacist, but God had a, a direct U-turn and uh, sent her to be a missionary. She's going to come today and, and greet us. Let's welcome her in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Well, this is where it all began for me. Is this a beginning for somebody here? Is, is, this, a, is this a beginning place for, for somebody here? Have you been born again in this place? Have you been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost? I have good news for you. 
God wants to do a work in your life that will take you to the ends of the world. Jesus told us um, in Mark 16 and 15, go into all the world and preach the good news to all nations. And I am a product of this church. When, when Brother Min would teach me the word, I, it was so precious to me. I would sleep with my Bible. I would sleep with my Bible under my bed, under my pillow, and I would say, oh, Jesus, let this word of God get into my mind and change this carnal nature within me. This was a place of a new beginning for me. My, it, was, it was a place of a new beginning for me and my sister. Me and my sister, my sister's here today, and we would worship around this altar. Me, my, my mom, my sister, my, my brothers would come here, and it was just such a wonderful place. And God took me from, from Halifax to the ends of the earth. He gave me a wonderful husband, the most wonderful husband in the world, an evangelist and a prophet, and, and he has been so good to, to me and my children. I am so blessed. It was a beginning that started a miracle. This was a place of miracles. And for me to come back here today and see all of these new faces, it is just so beautiful. It is an answer to my prayers. I pray for this church. This church has faithfully supported us for so many years. And to come back here and see, see my prayers being answered. There are people in here today who are world changers. There are world changers. People from Nova Scotia go to the ends of the earth, and you are some of them. When, the, when Jesus told us to go into all nations and preach this message, it wasn't for just the pastor. It was for all of us. I encourage you today to receive the word of the Lord. Let that seed of the word of God change you. Let it change your heart, change your mind, change your family. It will bless you. It has blessed my family, and it will bless yours. You are in good hands today. This is a place that you can trust the ministry with your family and with your grandchildren and their children and their children, too. I am so overwhelmed today. I could have a big cry fest, but I am I'm, I'm so anxious to hear the word of God today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. Amen. LJ and May Lee, can you stand today? These are beautiful young people. LJ and just May Lee, stand. Amen. These are heroes, and they can speak. They can speak full on Taiwanese and uh, with perfect accent. And, and I understand LJ is correcting the teachers, and and uh, they're over there trying to tell him he's saying it wrong. And he said, "Tell the tell the class I'm saying it right." And uh, if you knew his dad, you would understand, and his mom, I guess. But we're so honored to have you here. Um, it only takes a few moments to fall in love with these kids. And how many people would do a, a, me a favor today? Would you just try to find a way to bless them? If you have 20 bucks in your wallet, if you have 5 bucks, 100 bucks, I don't know. Let's just keep raising it. Let, let's bless them today. Can we do that, church? Can we do that? In Jesus' name. You can thank me later, LJ. You can thank me later. Amen. Let's all, let's all stand back to our feet. And uh, we're going to get ready. I do have just a couple transition announcements. Um, I do want to make uh, mention that on May 5th, um, we're going to transition into two services um, at one church. Um, we, we thank God. I know we could squeeze a few more people in here, um, but we do understand that uh, what God is doing um, is going to require more space. And so we're making, making room for that. Everybody say May 5th. May 5th. So that's going to happen. There's going to be a, a, a 9, 9 a.m. service and an 11 service. Um, you'll have a chance. And I know some people are very excited about that 9 a.m. service. So you can do what you're going to do the rest of the day. Um, but that's going to happen. And then on April 27th, I have um, organized a meeting with our sound team Saturday night. Um, we're going to be doing some work with our sound. We have a, a special guest coming in to help us. And then on the 28th, everybody say the 28th. So that should be on the screen there. On, on April 28th, after Sunday morning service, we're going to have a, a little team meeting here in the, in the sanctuary. Um, we're going to, anybody that's serving, we, we need you to be here, plan to be here. We'll have some food for you. Um, what we want to do is we want to uh, talk about what 
it's going to look like going forward because we're going to need a lot of people um, serving. This is going to open up a lot of leadership opportunity for people to serve in the kingdom. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't want to go to two services, um, to be honest. How many people like when we're all together? Anybody like that? Um, I don't really want to go to two, um, but we're, we're, we're forced to do that at this time. Um, we do have some opportunities that I want you to pray about. There's some potential property that um, God is, uh, is helping us and considering. So we need your prayers um, to pray over this because uh, God can open a door for us um, that no man can shut. Um, and, and God has a... How many believe that Jesus just wants to reach all of Halifax? Amen. Amen. If you, if you believe that, and I know you do, join me in prayer that God will just open up the windows of heaven. And that in the, in the face of everything the devil would try to do in this city, that Jesus would be lifted higher. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Going to get out of the way. Going to let the team come back. I believe uh, Brother Lou Micah is going to come and Pastor Micah is going to introduce him. Um, but why don't we just lift up our voice right now in some prayer. Let's get ready for the preached word of God. Uh, that's going to go over this pulpit today. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for everything we've heard, everything we've felt already. Jesus, we know that you're ordering the steps of this service. God, we pray that you would give us, Lord, direction today by your word. Bless the man of God that will grace this pulpit. And we pray your anointing, God, would be upon him, God, in a marked way. God, we bless you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You can give online today, as is our custom. We also have an offering box at the back today. Pastor Micah, if you can come. Are you going to, are you going to introduce him now or later? <laughs> you come and do it. All right. He's shaking his head, so that, that means there's confusion, but we'll, we'll, we'll survive. Praise the Lord. I want to reiterate what I opened with. We had an incredible weekend, Friday night, Saturday morning, and Saturday evening through the ministry of Brother Lou Micah Castillo. Also, his wife, Lexa Angelica, is with him. She did a tremendous job ministering in our morning devotion, a very challenging word. And this is just a powerhouse couple. They come from a very dynamic church that believes in the moving of the Spirit. Uh, as I mentioned, over 70 different nationalities represented in the church in Montreal, where they serve as the youth leaders and also as youth president in the Quebec district. But I'm just excited that they're here to minister this, this morning. I believe that God is going to speak through him today. So just before we receive the man of God, can we lift our hands this morning and just ask God to minister here? I believe that God is going to use him to release and impart something into this church. There's a connection already between the churches. His bishop, Paul Graham, was just here a few weeks ago. So this is a praying church, and I believe that there's something that God has for us today. So let's just, with expectation, ask God the minister here today. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray let the Holy Ghost, God, operate how you want it to today, God. I pray the anointing of the Holy Ghost would fill this sanctuary, God, for the work of the ministry today, God. I pray let it be released today, God. Let your word go forth, God, and begin to do a work here today in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We expect it today, God. We thank you in advance, God, for those that will receive the Holy Ghost, for those that are being baptized in your name today. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's receive the man of God this morning. Praise God. Can we lift that up to Jesus one more time today? Lord, we praise your name, God, we glorify you. We magnify you. You are beautiful beyond description. Marvelous for word. Jesus, your love will save you. Jesus, oh. We praise your name, oh God. Hallelujah. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you To worship 
worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Can you lift it up with me this morning? To worship, to worship you, I live. Oh, to worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Can we lift up the name of Jesus one more time together with a hand clap of praise and adoration unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. All authority, all power is given in the name of Jesus. There's a move of the Holy Ghost that is in this room. And I'm here to let you know that what you have come in with, you can lay down at his feet and he'll take you right in. As a father embraces a child that comes running to him, he is here to embrace you. There's somebody in this room, I feel led of the Holy Ghost to say this. There's somebody in this room, the last time somebody laid hands on you, it was in pain, it was in affliction, it was to cause harm. There's somebody in this room that the last time somebody ever tried to approach you with words, it was with cutting edge words that destroyed you in your mind. 
but I'm here in the loving arms of a father has just embraced this entire sanctuary all of those watching online all of those that are tuning in and you've you've lost a bit of hope I'm here to preach hope tonight I'm here to preach hope in Jesus right now to everyone in this room there is freedom there is love there is liberty in the name of Jesus we give glory to God today for what he's done already this past weekend we have been so blessed to see a mighty move of God on the young people of the Nova Scotia district Pastor McKenzie what an amazing district you have it's such an honor for my wife and I to be here, to be privileged to serve in this capacity. Who are we to be able to do this? But we are so blessed and honored and privileged, and we want to honor you and Sister Grace as the superintendents of this district. We want to extend our love. <laughs> Pastor McKenzie, if you can help me, how many years ago was it that you graduated from Northeast Christian College? 21 years ago, Pastor McKenzie came on a weekend ministry trip to Montreal. And he was staying at the Timble household. And he was just young and he was just brilliant, full of energy and so much excitement for what God is doing in his life and to see what the Lord has done right before our very eyes, this congregation of saints that have been touched and blessed by his ministry and his wife, Sister Grace. It's so good to see you in the back. We love you so much. We give you big hugs. It's so good to see you. We've been longing to see you all weekend. But on the third day, we saw Grace. On the third day, we saw grace. Not only sister grace, but the grace of our God that is in this house. We want to honor and appreciate Pastor Paul Graham, my bishop. He is not here today, but his doppelganger is in the house. He, was, he spoke with us. Such a humble man. Brother Dickinson, Sister Dickinson, we love you. We love your spirit and what the Lord has done through you in the past 20 years in the province of Nova Scotia. God bless you for your sacrifice. God bless you for what you've done. Can we give some love and honor to this man and woman of God? He's been superintendent for 20 years and he graduated with Pastor Graham at Northeast Christian College and it's a it's a funny thing that my wife had told me but I think they were speaking about how I, even after graduating at the same time it's only as of last year that Pastor Graham became superintendent of the Quebec district so you have 20 years and just one year in comparison but God is still moving nonetheless I want to honor and appreciate your district super uh, your district youth president Pastor Micah and Sister Sasha Hawks. I love, I love Pastor Micah. I love Sister Sasha so much. My wife and I extend our love and appreciation for you both. And we are grateful for our friendship that's going to be lasting until heaven. I'm looking forward to the great things that God has in store for you and your ministry here in the youth department of the Nova Scotia District. I want to give honor to all of the staff, the pastors, the, all of the ministers. My wife and I we were looking on your website and we saw how many members were needed to form a team. A comprehensive team that would be able to serve the community of Halifax. One Church Halifax, if this is your first time, you chose the perfect church for you. You have an amazing team of welcomers, team of staff members, Sunday school teachers, uh, 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 I believe uh, uh, 
discipleship. I believe you're one of the discipleship leaders, Pastor. And we're so glad to have been able to connect with you all. And thank you so much for all that you do. All of the licensed ministers, every single person that is here, all of our, our, our families that are coming. You're bringing your kids to church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for choosing to give your lives to the Lord. I want to honor, I'm, I'm almost done. I just want to honor my wife for being here with me this weekend. I love you and I appreciate you so much. She told me to keep it short, so I don't want to get in trouble after service. So I'm keeping it short. I love you, baby, more than you know. And I want to just share some love to my lovely daughter. She's, we got a photo of her right now. If you were here all weekend, you got the, the blessed opportunity to see her twice. And now you're going to see her a third time. But everybody else, you just got, you just got your first time here. This is Lovana Elora Castillo. She's the love of our lives. And she is 15 months old. And she has been a champ because she allowed us to come and minister and serve in this capacity. So I want to honor my daughter for allowing us these past 72 hours to be here with you all in this beautiful province of Nova Scotia. And I want to just give honor, lastly but not least, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For all that he's done and all that he's about to do. The two young people that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This past weekend, it's not over. I'm believing with you, Pastor, that there's somebody here in this sanctuary. You have never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You felt him and you are feeling him right now. You're wondering what it is that you're feeling. But let me confirm to you what you're feeling is Jesus all the way through. And he wants not only for you to feel him all around you like the goosies that you feel or that little chill up your spine or that comfort and peace that you may be feeling within, but he wants to live inside of you. And he is going to do this right now and right here. If you would turn your Bibles with me today, and we're going to go ahead to the word of God in Psalms 150 verse 1 to 6 this morning glory to your name glory to the name of Jesus Psalms 150 verse 1 to 6 if you can read this with me this morning praise ye the Lord praise God in his sanctuary Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and the organs. Come on, Pastor Micah. Come on now. Hey. That's what I want to hear. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. My brother, I'm sorry, I'm making you work overtime this morning. But if you can hit those cymbals for me, brother. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath, it doesn't matter if you've got Canadian breath in your lungs. It doesn't matter if you've got Nigerian breath in your lungs. It doesn't matter if you've got Filipino breath in your lungs. It doesn't matter if you've got Latino breath in your lungs. It doesn't matter if you've got African breath in your lungs. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you've got breath in your lungs, you ought to praise the Lord. Put your Bibles down and lift your hands up to Jesus with me as I ask Pastor McGenzie to bless this word here to this morning. Father, we thank you today for the anointing, God, that's in the house of God. Thank you for every person that's gathered. Let the man of God speak with complete, Lord God, authority. The word that you have given him, let it settle, Lord, and let it be done. Let your perfect will be accomplished. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. 
and you may be seated as you sit down and shake your neighbor's hand and tell them you look better now than when you first came in. The truth of the matter is praise makes you look better. Praise makes you look a whole lot better. With the help of the Holy Ghost, I would like to preach from this scripture of Psalm 150, this title, A Jesus Praising Church. Look at your neighbor and tell them, A Jesus Praising Church. I want to be a part of that church this morning, amen? What is praise? The definition of praise, halal, pronounced halal, a primitive root to be clear. Originally of sound, but usually of color. To shine, hence to make a show, to boast, and thus to be clamorously foolish, to rave causatively, to celebrate, also to stultify. To make, boast, and celebrate, to command, to deal foolishly, and give glory to a certain thing. We find ourselves here coming to church. You are greeting one another, shaking each other, saying, hey, bro, those are awesome shoes, bro. You're killing it. Sister, I love your dress. Did you get that at Sears? I don't know if there's Sears here in Nova Scotia. Did you get that at Forever 21 or, or, or H&M? I'm sorry. I'm not, you, I, clearly, I'm not a shopper here. My wife is the expert here. We give compliments. You look great today. The way you did your hair, that's a great haircut. And I pray that the Lord continues to bless those with hair. If you've got hair, like my pastor, you just got to get, you got to thank God for the little bit that you have. Every, in everything, give thanks. Can I hear an amen? We give praise to one another. We give praise. You did a great job on your exam. You get a hundred, you get a star. Great job on, on, your, on, on everything that you're doing. You have a child that comes with a beautiful drawing. And they've draw, drawn it with all of their heart. And they say, Mommy, Mommy, i got something to show you. And you praise them. Honey, I, I'm, I'm so happy. What a beautiful drawing. We praise so often in our everyday lives. But we know who is worthy of all the praise. Our one true living God. We declare our praise to him. God, you're mighty. God, you're worthy. God, you're high and lifted up. God, we praise your holy name. When you come to church, and if this is your first time, you're hearing this language repeated over and over again. Lord, we just want you to be glorified. We want you to be magnified. Our problems are big, but God, we're making you bigger. God, we're glorifying you bigger than our situation. And when you become bigger in my heart and in my mind, there is nothing that the enemy can throw my way that can detract me from loving you, from believing and having faith in you. 2 Samuel 22 verse 4, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. I want to thank my brother in the back who's doing an amazing job with the projection and the, and the, and the, the scriptures here. Thank you so much, bro. I love you. Thank you so much. 2 Samuel 22 verse 50, therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto your name we're going to hear that constantly repeated in scripture the value and the importance and the need for praise first chronicles chapter 16 25 for great is the lord and greatly to be praised he is also to be feared above all gods First Chronicles chapter 20 verse 30. And to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord and likewise at even. Psalm 7 verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Psalms chapter 9 verse 1. I will praise thee O Lord with my whole heart. I will show forth thy marvelous works psalms 9 verse 2 i will be glad and rejoice 
in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Psalm 9 verse 11. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. You can go through the entire book of Psalms and you can find scripture after scripture, word after word, highlighting and defining the praise unto God. That it is of value and great importance unto the children of God. If it is repeated time after time, and we can be here for hours, Pastor. But I know somebody's got a chicken dinner waiting for them after service. So I don't want to hold you back for too long. But you're finding praise and it's highlighted and it's given such importance. I wonder for a second if you would agree with me that praise has got to be in my life more than anything ever before. I was worshiping different things in my life. If I was worshiping the time with cigarettes or the time just with, with, with just movies over consuming my time or, or if, if I was finding myself maybe glorifying sports figures and time of watching on the TV of what, whatever, whatever's been playing or whatever show or whatever binge watching show I've been, I've been taking the time, the time that I'm allocating to that is praise unto that thing, glorifying that other thing. Lord, transition us. Lord, I pray, touch the heart of our bodies. Touch the heart of our minds. Touch our heart as the body of Christ. That we would be transforming our praise entirely. What we were made to do. And that is to worship you alone. How must we praise? Brothers and sisters, I'm going to break this down just for a few moments. If you would indulge me here. How must we praise? John chapter 4, 23, 24. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's looking. God is looking for worshipers. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And in truth, brothers and sisters, there is no other way that we can worship God. The only way that we can is in the spirit and in truth. If there are things that are in our lives that have been fake and maybe we've been, we've been playing false church and maybe we've been acting church on Sunday, but on Monday we're, 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 we're playing with the world. I wonder what would happen if we as the body of Christ would tear away that old lifestyle of sin and begin to fully live in the truth of the word of God. To worship him in spirit and in truth. There are six Hebrew biblical words on how we must praise if you don't know this, allow me a few moments to break it down with you. The biblical Hebrew word that we're going to talk about first is yada. Somebody say yada. Yada means to worship with extended hands. Can we do that just for a second here in this sanctuary? Extended hands. Yada. I want you to picture this just for a moment. A three-year-old child, hands raised, running towards daddy, crying, hold me daddy. Hold me and pick me up. This is what yada means. Yada is often translated as lifting of hands and giving thanks. Yada is a cry for help. Yada praise is used when we are in desperate straits and in need of a victory from the Lord raising your hands when you come to the house of God when you raise your hands it is one of the most explosive and meaningful expressions of praise when you raise your hands it is the international sign of surrender when you raise your hands it means I got hole I got nothing to hide I'm coming wide open and I want you to do whatever you want to do with me God I'm available do what you want I surrender yada Hallelujah. Psalms 134 verse 2 lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord Psalms 28 verse 2 hear the voice of my supplications and when I cry unto thee when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle first Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath or downing 
the second Hebrew word for praise, the action of how to praise is toda and shabak. Toda means to shout. Can somebody with me just for a moment, I know you're waking up and this crazy preacher from Montreal is shouting his guts out in the middle of Halifax. And everybody's saying this guy is a fool, but that's okay. As long as I'm a fool for Jesus, I'll do it a hundred times over. But if you can shout Jesus with me on the count of three, one, two, three, Jesus. Hallelujah. Toda means to shout or to address with a loud voice. But Toda goes even further. It includes an attitude of gratitude for God's promised deliverance even while we are still in the midst of a need. This type of praise also refers to the lifting of the hands in inviting God's help. Toda praise is having faith and assurance that it is well even before the victory actually comes. When you're alone at home and you've got things kind of piling on you and you're in a moment of prayer. You're kneeling at the side of your bed and you're in a need of prayer. You just go ahead and allow the spirit of God to work in you and as you pray, just go ahead and lift up your voice. Just go ahead and say, Jesus. I need you. My family is standing in the need of prayer. We are in need of a move. We are in need of a change. When you utter this, this is how you toda. Psalms 56 verse 1 to 12. Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit when I am afraid I put my trust in you in God whose word I praise all day long they twist my words they conspire they lurk they watch my steps hoping to take my life record my misery then my enemies will turn back when I call for help by this I will know that God is for me when David is trapped by the Philistines in Gath he gives thanks and offers toda praise even before God delivers him. What an act of faith that that requires. The third word I want to bring to our attention this morning is zamar. Zamar, and I'm going to need Pastor Micah's help here for just for a second. Zamar means to pluck the strings of an instrument. We see the piano and the keyboard as it is electronically advanced by technology and it's a beautiful thing. However, when you look at the original keyboards, they were actually elongated and largened harps that were laid on the side. And when you would hit ivory keys, little felt hammers would go ahead and strike the strings to produce a beautiful sound. Play us something beautiful, brother. Play us some praise. Hey. Come on. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. That's amazing. Some praise unto God. And this is what Zamar means. It speaks of rejoicing. It is involved in the joyful expression of music. Zamar means to sing praises or to touch the strings. It speaks of involving every available instrument. Come on, my brother. I'm going to need your help on the drums. You go ahead, hit those cymbals for me for a second. It means hitting ava every available instrument to make music and harmony before the Lord. It is God's will that we be joyful. We got to use the Samar when you're rejoicing. After God has done something great for you, for the director of music, of David the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord of the words of this psalm. When the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Psalms 150 verse 3 to 5. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him upon the timbrel and the dance. Praise him. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. 
praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Psalms 18 verse 1 to 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. If you think we're crazy in church, just you wait. Tehillah, the next word, Tehillah, means to sing or to laud. Tehillah involves music and singing, especially singing. Singing is vital to the worship of God. There are over 300 mandates in the word of God to sing. This word suggests that God himself is a song of praise. We might say it like this, God is our song. God is my song. Psalm 22 verse 3, yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. Psalm 96 verse 1 to 2, oh sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. With every breath that you have, you ought to sing unto the Lord. You got to lift up a song unto God. You got to lift up your worship. Pastor McKenzie, I know this is a microphone that we got right here. But I believe, I'm willing to believe that there, there are some brothers and sisters that have a shower head as a microphone. And you'll be singing in there. You'll be singing in there. How great he is our God. Everybody sing with me. How great he is our God. Oh, 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 oh we'll see how great he's our God. He's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of his. And my heart will sing. Hey, how great is our God. Come on, declare this with me this morning. Then sings my soul, my how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my. you can carry a note or not it doesn't matter if you've been singing on the platform for a while or if you've been in congregation learning these gospel songs for the longest time the Bible doesn't qualify you because of how long you've been in the church to tell you whether you can sing worship to God or not it just commands us to sing unto the Lord 
So let us sing unto our God. Psalm 96, 1 to 2. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Praise the Lord. Can we clap our hands as you're seated this morning? The next word of worship is Barak. Barak is used to denote blessing. Barak suggests the transcendent privilege of blessing the Lord. Psalm 103 verse 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Psalms 113 verse 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Psalms 103 verse 20 to 22. Bless the Lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word bless ye the lord all ye hosts ye ministers of his that do his pleasure bless the lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the lord O oh my soul and the last word i want to share with us is hallelujah can we just try that one more time across the sanctuary? Hallelujah. Just, just one more over. Just unto God. Hallelujah. Can we just make that a repetition? Hallelujah. This is, this is the last Hebrew word we're about to go through here in just a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the premier word for praise in the Bible. Hallelujah transcends the languages of all of the world. It is not translated. It is neither is it transliterated. Hallel in hallelujah. Hallel means to boast or to brag on. To make a show even to the point of looking ridiculous. Yah in hallelujah is the short form of the name of God. Hallelujah is the spontaneous outcry of one who is excited who is excited about God the first thing we greet our brothers and, praise the Lord my brother it's good to see you hallelujah may the Lord be praised when you come to church in the house of God and you hear hallelujah all around it ain't just what the world has been twisting it for purposes of the world in their songs and in the way that they sing it. But the main purpose is to glorify and magnify and edify and lift up the name above every other name. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And it's at the name of Jesus that every knee is going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ his Lord. Hallelujah is the spontaneous outcry of somebody who is excited about God. It is used only 24 times in the Old Testament, all between Psalm 104 and 150. It is reserved, hear me this morning, it is reserved for times of extreme exaltation. Revelations 19 and 1. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven singing, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power to the Lord our God. 
For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Yes, the Lord our God he is wonderful. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. For the Lord our God, for the Lord our God. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Yes, the Lord our God, He is wonderful. Praise unto the King of kings. Glory to His name. This is how we must praise. If you didn't know how to praise, you can leave with certainty this Sunday morning that now you know how to praise. Can we do a little demonstration of that to Jesus with a little bit of praise of what you learned just a few moments ago? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Jesus! Jesus! And you may be seated this morning. My next question for us this morning is, who must praise? Can we go to Ezekiel 28, verse 13 to 15? Lucifer and his previous purpose was to worship and praise God Almighty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. That was upon the holy mountain of God. That was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. That was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. When the devil who was once known as Lucifer was cast out of heaven, it was for pride of what he was reflecting. His light, how bright he was, he, it, it, it just got to his head. The devil, formerly known as this Lucifer, was created to worship the Lord God Almighty. <clears throat> Pride gripped a hold of him. And that was the beginning of his destruction and the eventual casting out of Lucifer from heaven with one third of the angels. Being a song leader at our local church, the value and the importance that has been reiterated by our pastor for the music team, the praise singers, and everyone involved in any form of worship is the need and the importance of humility. The need and the value that this must be driven into each of us. Humility, brokenness, contriteness of heart, and a need to give all glory to God. May we never allow for the glory to ever come to our heads. May we always reflect it immediately with no cracks in that mirror, but an immediate reflection unto God God needs to be worshipped he needs to be praised he is worthy of all the praise that is why he created you and he created me he created humanity with the power of choice to choose to worship him you have chosen this morning to be in this house of God. You have chosen to tune in to this live stream. You have chosen to give your life unto the Lord and to praise him. Isaiah 43 verse 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Every fabric of our being. Every part of us is made to worship. Is made for praise. We were made for this. And the truth, brothers and sisters, if we don't worship the one true living God, Jesus Christ, we will end up worshiping and praising other gods. 
Joshua 24 verse 15 and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord the next question I have for the church this morning is when must we praise? Psalms 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 119 verse 164. Seven times a day I will praise thee because of thy righteous judgments <clears throat> psalms 118 verse 24 this is the day which the lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it the bottom line we must worship and praise god every single day all day every day that's how young people talk now pastor in the youth group all day, every day, Pastor, we're here. We're here, we're supporting, we, we, we come to church all day, every day. You know, on Monday, we got basketball. On Tuesday, we got prayer meeting. On Wednesday, we got growth and leadership. If you ever come to St. Laurent, our church back home, we got an awesome picture on the title slide. You won't see much of it, but on the title slide at the very beginning, if you can post that up, bro. It's a small picture of the church that we're so privileged to be able to be a part of, to lift up holy hands with my brothers and sisters. But we got church going on every single day. There is no day that the church ain't busy. At seven o'clock in the at six o'clock in the morning, Pastor Graham is unlocking the church, Brother Dickinson. He's coming in and he's he's having his personal time of prayer. At nine o'clock, we have a few of the saints trickling in for prayer for grow uh, for for just the church growth prayer, and they come in every day, Monday to Friday, from nine to ten. And then on Wednesday, we have discipleship, and Thursday there's prayer meeting, and on Friday there's youth service, Saturday prayer meeting, Sunday there's about a million services going on in the building. I'm kind of exaggerating, but it's, it's a lot of services. So I'm praying for y'all for two services that are coming up in Jesus' name. All day, every day. When must, must I praise? When must I lift up a praise unto God? 24 hours a day. When should I give thanks unto God? Seven days a week. When must I adore him? I must adore him 52 weeks per year. When must I magnify his name? 12 months a year. When must I glorify his holy name? 525,600 minutes a year. Every single moment with every breath that I'm able, I will praise the Lord. Praise does not depend on how you feel. Regardless of what we're going through, as we were made to worship God and praise Him, so ought we to obey and to do so. Can I talk, some, just some real talk with somebody here in the sanctuary. I just want to get real. There have been moments in my life where I just had a rough week. Pastor McKenzie was just talking about that earlier as he was standing here and he was talking to us about whatever you've gone through this week that was tough. Whatever situation you had gone through, God is in control. Just leave that to the side for a moment and let God have his way. That is exactly what happens when we find ourselves in a place of utter, just, I don't want to be here. I, I, I could be... You could be going to Walmart. You could be doing other things, a thousand other things. But you've determined in your mind, you know what, I'm going to make a little sacrifice here. And your sacrifice has proven to be your strength in this moment. And I already feel in this sanctuary just strength being lifted, Pastor. I already feel somebody as they've been worshiping earlier, as you've been magnifying God, as you've been seeing your other brother and sister, you've been seeing one another and you're encouraged just by the very sight of them being here. I'm so blessed to see what God is doing in my brother. They, they, uh, didn't they have a surgery last week? What, what are they doing in church already? They're, they're already lifting up their hands. I, I thought something was going on with them. Did, did, didn't that sister have some, a, a tragedy go on in their family? Look at them. They're raising their hands. They're praising God. When I see my brothers and sisters 
says, when we gather together in unity, oh, how good, how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. When we come to the house of God, when we praise, when we do it at all times, when we allow him to just be glorified in our lives, God will be able to give us that liberty and freedom that we had been looking for. He will provide the answer that we need. Where must praise happen, my brothers and sisters? Psalm 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. This means every single place that we go, we've got to praise him. Praise him. Praise him. I'll praise him in the morning. Praise him at the noon time. Praise him. I will praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. I'll praise him in my house. I'll praise him in my living room. I'll praise him in my bathroom. I'll praise him in my shower. Praise him in my car. Praise him on my bus and on my way to school. I'll praise him when the sun goes down. I'll praise him at my workplace. I'll praise him on the street. I'll praise him at Tim Hortons all the way down to Harvey's. I will praise him when I'm down and I'll praise him when I'm up. I will praise him when the sun goes down. Somebody praise him, pray. Is it somebody pray? Praise him in the morning. Praise him. Praise him. Praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. Everywhere that I go, anything that I do, I've got to praise. I've got a reason to praise the Lord. I'm almost done I'm almost done if you would give me just a few more moments today I'm coming somewhere I'm getting I'm getting somewhere if you would just continue with me what why must we praise this is what praise can do for you your praise is a weapon as some of our African brother back at church, you said, my praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. I come against the enemy in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I stomp on the devil. No authority in the enemy. The power is in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, they've been feeding me too much jollof rice. They've been feeding me too much of that orange rice that you got, y'all got. I'm African too. I got Africa in my blood. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We got to use this praise as a weapon, brothers and sisters. We got to praise him in advance for something that you've been praying for. You've been praying for a while. And if you want to get your answer, if you want to get your response, no matter how much time that God takes, I'm going to praise him anyway. Your praise will take you through your toughest moments in your life. Praise him when you feel it. Praise him when you don't. I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. Oh, I praise because I know you're still in control. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Oh, my praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. Praise him when a situation or when the enemy is overwhelming you. Praise prepares the soil of your heart to receive the word of God. Praise works the soil. Praise turns the soil. Praise prepares the ground 
for the seed of the word of God to be planted on fertile soil. There are some of the hearts of certain people maybe in this congregation right now maybe watching online you have been hardened because of something that had happened to you. You have been troubled and your heart has just been filled with so much resentment. You've gone through it. You've gone through the trial. You've gone through the pain. You've gone through the sorrow. You've gone through the rain. But I believe that when you praise the Lord, you begin to turn the soil of your heart. You're beginning to work the ground because it, it, it's just arid. It's just dry. It's desert light, Pastor. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning that everyone in this place has a God-shaped hole in each heart that is made to worship the one true living God the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the enemy has been filling your heart with garbage trials tribulations he's been filling that hole with worries with anxieties with habits that you sh that that you should have left at the altar but you've been carrying it back home habits that you should have left at his feet but you've been just dragging it right back out with you and you, you you've been battling week after week time after time praying for revival praying for a breakthrough praying that your heart would be completely surrendered to God but you're carrying things back home you're carrying things with you and your heart made for the space where God needs to dwell is constantly filled with distraction discouragement worry trial situations fear problems but I believe in the name of Jesus. I have a word from the Lord for the church this morning. I'm not a farmer by any means. I'm not an agriculture specialist. I'm not even a man with a green thumb. To be honest with you, my wife and I, for the past three years, we've been living at our house. I've been trying to grow grass. But every time at the end of fall, that grass is as brown as this ceiling right now. So Lord, help us. And Lord, maybe send us a specialist to fix our grass because we've been struggling hard. Every plant that is in our house is dying. As I declared earlier, I'm not a farmer or an agriculture specialist, nor a man with a green thumb by any means necessary. But I understand and know one thing for certain about planting and growing seed and seeing a harvest. I understand in order for seed to grow, you need to have good soil. We've got to have good seed. We need to have water. We need to have and allow the patience and time for that to grow. In order for that to happen, we need an outpour of the Holy Ghost. We need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost to happen in this place. And in this hardened soil, when you begin to praise, when you begin to worship God, you're not feeling like it. You're struggling to praise. You got the devil on your back the whole week. Your children are maybe a bit disobedient and uncompliant with you. And you're coming to the house of God. Or maybe you got immigration trouble. Or maybe you got paperwork that you're waiting for. Maybe at work you've not been given the favor that you've been working so hard for. There's so many things that are in your life that you've been struggling with. You've been dealing with sin. And it feels like God has not been in your life. But what God is calling this church this morning to do at One Church Halifax here in the province of Nova Scotia is to begin and continue on with your praise. When you don't feel like it, I'm going to praise anyway. I'm going to turn that soil of my heart. That part that is dark. That part.
that is dry, that part that is weary, that part that wants to give up, that part that's just tired of fighting, that part that's just tired of praying. I want to encourage somebody this morning, just keep praising. Just keep praising the Lord. Because as you begin to work on that ground, it's not going to be dry for too long, Pastor Nick Deal. Something's got to change. The deeper you go in your praise, the more moisture you're going to find underground. There's going to be a place where the moisture is coming deep inside of you. You were made to worship. At the depth of your heart is fertile soil for Jesus to be praised and worshiped and to manifest his power in your life. But all you got to do is just keep praising just keep praising him because you're going to get to a place where that dry ground is going to get out of the way that dry ground will have no more room because it's all going to be the moist soil how do we get to the well at the bottom of the ground we just keep digging we just keep praising how do we get to the place where the word of god begins to take root in our hearts I just got to keep praising him. I got to have a lifestyle of praise. I can't just praise on Sunday, Pastor. I can't do church part-time. I can't live for God part-time. I got to keep praising him. I just got to keep digging. I just got to keep worshiping. I got to keep being faithful to what God has called me to do, to what God has called me to be. God, I will praise you in the morning. I will praise you at noontime. Dig deeper. Get your praise from the depths of your soul and you will begin to see the miraculous take place in your life. Matthew 13, 1 to 8. That same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake unto them, in parable saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell on stony places when they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them but other fell into the good ground and brought forth fruit some an hundredfold some sixtyfold some thirtyfold sometimes I'm, I'm a I want to speak to the ministry team for a moment here this morning as pastors worship leaders ministry leaders we find ourselves leading worship or teaching our lessons to our saints and sometimes it doesn't catch on in the congregation and we keep asking ourselves if something is off in our sermon delivery or in the way that we worship i'm here to encourage somebody here this morning pastors discipleship teachers bible study teachers sunday school teachers and the church of the living god that you're witnessing to your families when you continue in that diligent teaching, the encouraging, the exhorting, the rebuking, and the leading of people of God into His presence in worship, you are helping to turn the soil. You are helping that praise to continue on. You encourage everyone and every life that you touch. Don't give up on that hard saint. Don't give up. I'm that difficult student. Praise team musicians, don't give up in a hardened atmosphere. You are working the soil. You're preparing the ground for the word of God to take root. Just keep digging. Just keep praising. The deeper you go, you will find that everybody has a place in them made for Jesus. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 to 10. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit 
shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The last thing I'm just going to say, who do we need to praise? Jude 25 verse 1 to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen first Peter 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ while which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead Isaiah 43 verse 10 ye are my witnesses saith the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed neither shall there be after me Isaiah 44 verse 6 thus saith the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God Deuteronomy 6 4 hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord Isaiah 45 verse 5 and 6 I am the Lord and there is none else there is no God beside me I girded thee though thou hast not known me that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me I am the Lord and there is none beside me I am the Lord and there is no one else Galatians 3 20 now a meteor mediator is not a mediator of one but God is one first corinthians 8 verse 4 as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offended offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other god but one first timothy 2 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus through these dark times that we're living in in these last days we've got to praise the Lord greater than we ever had before we've got to let our worship out we got to let our praise out I wonder if you can stand to your feet with me just for this last verse here tonight I don't know about you but I'm reminded by this word I'm reminded that no matter what I'm going to go through, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. I've got a way to praise the Lord. I know when I have to praise the Lord. I know how I'm going to praise the Lord. I know where I'm going to praise the Lord. I know with who I got to praise the Lord with. I know who I will praise. This is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in order for our world to know who He is. John 12, 31 to 32. Now this is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of the world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, if I will be praised in this world, if you will praise the Lord together with me, then will I draw all men unto me. One church, Halifax, in Nova Scotia. We must lift up Jesus so that all the world can know that in these last days, He is our blessed hope. For a moment, if you can just begin to praise the Lord in this room. There's nothing left to do. I got nothing left. I got nothing left to say. I got nothing left. I'm all done. I don't want to hold you back right now. I want to release this church into an atmosphere of praise and worship like you've never done before. Some of you, you've been holding back your praise. But God has been digging. God is digging right now. God is digging at you and he's inviting you to dig a little deeper. He's inviting you to dig a little deeper in your praise, in your lifestyle. God we want you to be reflected in my praise. Be glorified, God. Be magnified today. We need you in this hour, Lord. 
We need you in this hour, Lord. I wonder if I want I'm following the Holy Ghost right now I wonder right now if you want to take the next step into your walk with praise unto God you want to lift up a deeper praise unto God a higher praise unto God if you want to step forward this altar is open we're just going to transform this whole sanctuary into a praise and worship session we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus God is about to take over we're going to lift him up if you've never praised God before I gave you a couple of examples but I want to invite everybody Find your neighbor by the hand and bring them to the altar with you. Come with me, my sister. Come with me, my brother. Let's praise him together. Let's praise him together. The worship team is getting ready. The worship team is getting ready. I wonder if we can come. Let's come. Let's come as an act of faith. If we can demonstrate that to God. God, I want to go deeper. I, I want to praise you like I never praised before. I want to go deeper in my worship like I never had before. I'm taking the step of faith. I know I've gone through things in life, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up as your word has declared to me. I'm going to praise you when I'm down. I'm going to praise you when I'm up. I'm going to praise you in the morning. I'm going to praise you at noontime. Come on, let the word of God work here in this place. Let's come. We got room. We got room. Let's fill this altar. Let's fill this altar. Let's come on up. Let's continue on up. That's it. That's it this morning. Haramanda yareke. He ala barria tala masata yarebeke. He ala barria tala masoto yorobo kosete. He ala barria tala masata. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give a little bit of instruction, and then we're going to just obey the word of the Lord, and we're going to praise Him. The Lord has been just speaking to my spirit over the last while about where we are as a church, and and there's been seasons where the Lord has has planted this church. We have went from a homeless church to a place where God gave us an address. And now in a, another season where the Lord is opening up doors for us. And there will be another season for this, this great group of people. And yet, all that being true, um, Satan is busy trying to hinder the saints. The Bible says that, that he seeks to wear out the saints of the Most High. And he tries to wear us down from, from establishing and, and recognizing who we are. And so tonight, or this, this morning, we're in a very prophetic moment right now. And what we do right now, we've been in moments like this before, but what we do right now is going to determine what the outcome will be for our future. Don't wrestle with that word. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, what you do right now in this moment with your worship will determine your future. What you do right now, God has this church at a, a great crossroad where we're going to determine that we are not going to be buried into oblivion, but we're going to rise and we're going to magnify God. We're going to show the glory of God to another generation. It's true. It's true. And if you're going to be a part of it, then we're going to join together. We're going to worship Jesus under the unction of the Spirit. This isn't just us giving God our worship. God is requesting. God is looking down today to the sanctuary to see a 20 Gesner Street. Do I have any worshipers that will worship me in spirit and in truth? Do I have any people that will make up their mind? As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord.
this scripture the Lord has put up on my spirit that he read. It said, some fell upon the stony places where there had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Right now, in this moment, God is going to plunge somebody into a place of deepness. God is going to take your roots, and God is going to plant them so deep that hell's going to wish it never bothered with you. It's going to wish it never messed with you, because God is going to establish you. The Bible refers to the child of God as a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I'm letting you know today, you will not wither up. You will not dry up. God will sustain you. I'm telling you prophetically right now, you will not be dried up. You hear me, child of God. You will not wither away. God will sustain you. Hallelujah. But what we do right now matters. And I know today there is a variation of different levels of understanding. So you'll have to forgive us. We're on a journey to fulfill the call of God in our lives. We're on a journey to fulfill the call of God in a city. We're on a journey to hold on to a scarlet thread and hang it out the window as the Bible says. So a passerby can see there's a hope in Halifax for my addiction. There's a hope in Halifax for my depression. There's a hope in Halifax for my problem. The Bible says in verse 6, when the sun was, was, came up and they were scorched. Some of you have felt scorched. Hear me. Some of you have felt the pressure of the heat of the day. And, and, and you are tempted in this moment to be what, what the scripture says. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell amongst the thorns because these things came and choked. But what we need to do right now, all over this house with reckless abandon, is begin to give God glory in our lives and say, God, plant me in your will. Plant me in your presence. God, plant me in your house, God, so that I'm a Movable. Listen, I'm preaching to somebody that's come under the, the heat of the day. Don't give up in the heat of the day. Don't give way to the heat of the day. Call out to Jesus. Call out for water. I need you, God. I need you, God. Hallelujah. So with that instruction today, I, I'm inviting this whole place to enter into a place of prophetic praise where your praise is a declaration that God I will see your glory I will see God your wonders in my life God I will see the fulfillment of the promise God you can use me God I surrender myself to you hallelujah hallelujah God I halal your name I magnify your name I glorify your mighty name Jesus. Oh, I feel it in the house. I feel the unction of the Spirit of God. Could you do it? Worship team, they're going to lead us. We're going to sing a few songs, but I wonder all over the house that you would just begin to lift up a praise to Jesus. Lift up a mighty praise to Jesus. Oh, a rock isn't going to cry out in my place. I was created to worship Him. Oh, somebody in a dry place, somebody scorched by the heat of the day, would you reach out for the rain? Would you reach out for the soil that is fresh and moist and full of life? Would you reach out to Him today? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, church, let's lift up a praise. Come on, it isn't a show, it's just worship. However, it comes, let it come. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Maybe you need to connect with somebody. Maybe you need to pray with somebody. Maybe you need to help somebody touch God.